Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be making these photo pouches. This combines two of my favorite things to do, sublimation and sewing. And look how cute they turned out. So this one has Ace and Evie and their mom, my daughter, on the one side and on the other side is a fun memento from a trip to the zoo that we took. And this one has a surprise. This would be great for brides, for bridal showers, for mother of the bride gifts, because look, on the inside, I've got a picture of Alex and Maggie's wedding and it says, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's in there. It says forever and always and I've got their wedding date in there. If I can get it straight in the camera. But this one's a little more subtle. So she could either use this for a um, keepsake to keep some of her wedding mementos in or just use it as a coin purse or uh, you know, a makeup bag inside her bag. You can make these any size you want. And I'm gonna show you how to make a cotton version and how to make a polyester version. This one's actually made out of polyester, so I didn't have to do anything to it. And it took the photo so well. Now it looks like I've got a line in it, but that's actually just a crease. I tried to iron it on the heat press and I folded it, but it's not really in there, but it took the photo so well. And I think these turned out so cute. I love, love, love this. I think this is a, great idea for the bride to give maybe uh the mother of the groom her little gift or you know even to give the bridesmaids their gifts and you could put the photo on the outside either way but two ways to do it we're going to jump right into the video so let's get started so today we're going to be combining two of my favorite things to do sublimation and sewing Ever since I started the sublimation series, this has been my end game. I wanted to marry the two and show you how you can use sublimation and your sewing machine to create some very unique, very personalized projects. And I can't wait for today's project. We're going to be making a photo pouch. And if you have followed me very long and you're a Cricut user, you know that I did a video uh, showing how to make a photo pouch using your Cricut. And I will link that right here. If you're a Cricut user, you might want to go watch that video and I will show you how to do that without sublimation. But sublimation is perfect for this particular project. Now I do have some other projects in mind that are going to be coming up in really soon <laughs> future videos where we're going to marry the two in some future projects. But this one I think is a big hit, especially with the holidays around the corner. Grandmas love these, moms love these. Uh, the kids are gonna love these. They're perfect wedding keepsakes. So let's get started and I'm going to show you how we're going to create these projects. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create our printable fabric or our fabric with the picture on it. Now you don't have to use a photo. You could use anything you wanted. You could use your favorite sports team logo. You could create, um, you know, just a floral print, whatever you want. I wanted to make a photo pouch, so that's what I'm going to do for my print. But you can literally print whatever you want to put on your pouch. I am going to be using this cotton fabric. This is just white cotton fabric. And in order to sublimate on the white cotton fabric, we're going to be using a product called Poly T Plus. I've used it in a another video when we sublimated a cotton t-shirt. And you can watch that video here. I'll try to remember to link that. And um, it's going to be the same process for the cotton fabric. So we're going to be using that for the cotton fabric. We're also going to be doing a version using 100% polyester fabric. I picked this up at Joann's and I also got some from Walmart. The one from Walmart's a little bit thicker than this one from Joann's. But this is a very stretchy fabric. As you know, polyester is perfect for sublimation, but it's not really perfect for a lot of your sewing projects. So in order to stabilize that, we're going to be using a little bit of Pellon Shape Flex. If you're not familiar with this, it is a stabilizer. It's a woven stabilizer. It has an adhesive on the back. And when ironed on to this polyester, it's going to make it so that it's not so stretchy and it's going to have more of a cotton feel. And then we'll be able to sublimate right on this fabric, this polyester fabric, which sublimation and 100% polyester love each other. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to apply the Pellon Shape Flex first to the polyester and then we'll go ahead and treat the cotton fabric so that we can do a cotton version as well. So I've got my polyester fabric and I have my Pellon Shape Flex. When you feel the Shape Flex, you're going to feel one side's really rough. That's the adhesive side. That's the side you want to put against your fabric. So I'm just going to take, this is the rough side that you're looking at. 
I'm going to put my polyester against that rough side. And I'm just going to place this on my heat press and heat this up for a few seconds. Now I've got my heat press preheated. I'm actually going to put, let's just put a piece of parchment paper down just to protect my press from getting any of the adhesive from the shape flex on it. I'm just gonna line it up like this. Make sure that the polyester is flat. Nice and flat. I've got my heat press on, let's see, 330 degrees. It really doesn't matter. You're just going to press it. It's going to go pretty quickly. If you don't have a heat press, you can absolutely use an iron to iron on the shape flex. That's what most people do. Just keep your iron moving. And uh, I prefer not to use steam when I'm going to be doing sublimation because I don't want to put extra moisture into my fabric. So I'm just going to give it a press for a few seconds. Again, that rough side is down against the polyester fabric. Let's see how we're doing. And that has already adhered to the polyester. So I'm going to do the other half. And I will have all of these products linked in the description below, including my heat press and the shape flex, everything I can find online, I'll try to link for you. And I'm going to give it one more press in the middle to make sure I got it all. Okay, so now my polyester is adhered to the shape flex. You can hardly tell the difference, but it's now no longer as stretchy. I can pull it a little bit, but not much. It feels more like a cotton fabric. Okay, so now let's move on to our Poly T Plus and treating the cotton fabric. First thing I'm gonna do is just give it a little press. I just wanna make sure that I've got some of the wrinkles out. Okay, so I've moved you down so that you can see my work surface. I have my piece of cotton that I pressed and I've got just a towel down to absorb some of this moisture. I can move you over a little bit more if that helps. All right, so I'm just gonna put my cotton down. I have my Poly T Plus. I have all of this linked in the description below. And I again, I will link the other video that really walks you through how to mix this and everything. But if you purchase this project product, all of the um, information is available on their website. So I'm going to spray this cotton fabric down pretty generously. And you really just want to uh, spray the area that you're going to be applying the print to. But since I don't need the outside area, I'm not too worried about it. All right, now I'm going to use a, this is just a paint roller. If you have a brayer, anything like that, use that. And all I'm going to do is press this into the fabric, rolling it just to roll that moisture down in the fabric. Now make sure that it really gets into the fibers. It looks like I've got pretty good adhesion, or it looks like I've had it saturated pretty well. You don't want it soaking wet, but it needs to be pretty saturated. I'm actually going to, this towel has some texture in it, so I'm going to move it onto my desktop for a second just to roll it and get in those grooves. All right. So now what we're going to do is go back up to the heat press. Let me get us situated there. And I have just put a, this is just at like a bar towel, a thin um, towel on top just to absorb the moisture and protect my heat press. And I'm just going to lay that on there. I'm going to put some parchment paper and I'm going to heat this at 330 degrees for 30 seconds. You're going to see some steam coming up. That is the moisture coming out of the project. This is drying that, pro that product into the fabric. We're coming up on our time. I'm going to open it up. 
Remove my parchment paper. My fabric is now dry. I'm going to give it another coat, just a light coat, right on the press. Let's give it another roll. All right, now we're going to press it one more time. 330 degrees this time for 20 seconds. All right, so we're coming up on 10. There we go. So that was 20 seconds. I had it on a 30 minute timer, so I pulled it at 10. And I just want you to see this. It's now sort of got a very starchy feeling to this cotton. This will wash out once it's washed, but now it has that polyester coating on it. So it is ready to be sublimated. So I'm gonna go ahead and print both of my sublimation prints, the one we're going to use for the polyester and the one we're going to use for the cotton. And I'll be right back. So I've trimmed out my photos. I've just trimmed them down, leaving just a small border on the edges. And that's just going to help me when I go to line it up. So I think what I'm gonna do is put this one on the sides of a pouch, the front and the back. And then on this one, I'm gonna put it on the inside of the pouch as a keepsake for some of their wedding photos. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cotton for the wedding pouch and then I'm going to use the polyester for the other pouch. So since I still have the cotton that we have treated with the poly tea on the press, I'm going to start with this one. So first thing I want to do is protect my press. So I'm going to put a piece of paper on the bottom just to protect my press from any ink that might go through. I'm going to put my fabric back down. The side that we treated is faced up. And I'm just going to put my image face down. And let's see if I can put it this direction. I actually have more fabric than I need. And then I'm going to cover it with, again, a piece of butcher paper. I'm going to press it 385 for 40 seconds. Okay, so we're almost done. Two, one. Let's see how our cotton sublimation print turned out. Be very careful, it's hot. Perfect. All right, so here is my print. And uh, this is on the cotton fabric. So let's try our prints on the polyester fabric. So I'm going to put it so that the shape flex, the interfacing is face down and the polyester is faced up. I'm going to line my prints up. I made my prints about five by seven ish. You can do whatever size you want. Just make sure they're both the same size for the front and back of your pouch. And I'm just going to cover that with some parchment paper or butcher paper. 385, 40 seconds. And again, I want you to notice this is the print and this is how it printed out. I'm using the copy paper again. So you can see it, I'm getting really great results. I don't know how the, the glare's coming on there. Now for this one, I'm going to do the opposite side of the pouch, just plain white. So I'm going to use the bottom portion of this piece of fabric. But for this one, we're going to do the outside and I've got a front and a back. So we're almost done. Let's see how our prints turned out on polyester fabric. And here are our prints for the polyester fabric. So you can see just how beautifully that did with absolutely no treatment whatsoever. That's just 100% polyester fabric. So now let's turn the camera around and we'll begin the sewing portion of this project. So here are our prints that we printed. This is the cotton fabric that we treated with the Poly T Plus, and this is the polyester fabric that we have lined with Shape Flex and we didn't have to treat that. We sublimated, sublimated right on the polyester. 
Now I cut, I made each of my prints five by seven. So I cut two five by seven pieces of fabric for each project. I'm also going to need to cut another five by seven for the inside of this pouch. I'm putting this design on the inside of my pouch. So I need a matching lining piece for the other side. You need two pieces for the lining and two pieces for the outside. These are going to be my outside prints. These are going to be my linings. So once you have everything cut out, the next thing you need to decide is if you want your fabric to be a little bit stiffer. We put the Shape Flex on the cotton fabric, so it's got a little bit of substance, but it's still going to be pretty soft, um, pretty, uh, I don't know, Just it's just gonna have more of a fabric feel. So in order to give this just a little bit more of a substance, a little bit more substantial, I lined my lining pieces with some fusible fleece and I will link this in the description below. Again, it's just a, it's almost like a cotton batting with adhesive on the back. It, it is like a cotton batting with adhesive on the back. I just use my heat press to apply it. You can use an iron either way works but it's just going to give it a little bit more substance. Neither of these are going to be real stiff. If you want them to be stiff, you need to use a heavier interfacing. But I went ahead and I did that to the fabrics that are going, these are going to be the outer fabrics actually for this one. For this one, again, we didn't have to do anything other than apply the shape flex to the back of this just to keep it from stretching and to be able to sew it but I wanted it to, to be a little bit softer. Still, you can see it, the, the, this, this was a pouch. It would be very pliable, very smooshy. So I wanted it to have a little bit more substance. So on the back of what's going to be my lining pieces for this one, I used a medium interfacing. So it just gave it, you can see it's kind of like a paper. If you can hear it. It still bends, it still feels like fabric, but it's a medium weight interfacing and that's just going to give me a little bit of structure to this bag. Again, if you want even more structure, you could add a heavy interfacing, you could add a fusible fleece, you could do whatever you want. This is just going to be a couple of really easy zipper pouches and I didn't think it needed too much, but I wanted to add a little bit of something. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and cut out your printed fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I have all my fabrics cut out and I cut out an extra piece for this one. Again, this is going to be my lining fabric. So I needed two pieces of lining. You need two pieces for outer. So however you're going to do yours, whether you're gonna put the photos on the inside or the outside, you need four pieces of fabric that are the same size. So mine are all cut to five by seven. Again, you can make this any size you want. I'm using five by seven for this demonstration. So these are going to be my lining. These are going to be my outer. This is going to be my outer and these are going to be my lining and everything is cut to five by seven. Next, you're going to need two pieces of fabric cut to two by two and those can be coordinating or uh, just complementary, whatever you want. Those are going to be our zipper tabs. So we're going to use zipper tabs on the end just to have some nice clean finishes. And then you're going to need two zippers that are at least as long as the long side of your pouch. Mine are, pouches are seven inches. So I believe these zippers are actually seven inch zippers. That, that one is, this one's longer than I need. If you have longer than you need, that's absolutely fine. It actually works a little bit better. So I'm just going to assemble one pouch, but the assembly is going to be the same for both pouches, okay? So let's do this one. So I have two pieces for the outer, two pieces for the lining, my zipper, and a two by two fabric for my zipper tabs. So you wanna start with your zipper, and the first thing we're going to do is cut off those zipper tabs. So I'm just going to unzip it a little bit, be very careful and just cut right below that zipper. Stop. Now take it over to the machine and stitch back and forth as close to the edge as you can, just so that we don't accidentally move our zipper pull right off the end of the zipper. So once you have that done, it should look something like that. Now on mine, it was seven inches. Whatever yours is, you wanna cut from this edge of the zipper one inch less than what that is. So mine was seven. I want to make this six inches. So I'm going to take my ruler 
and I'm gonna make sure my zipper pull is over here to the left. It's not gonna come off because we've sewed that edge. And the six inch mark, I line it up on my grid on my desk mat. The six inch mark is right there. So I'm going to cut six inch right there. So now this is six inches. It should be one inch shorter than my fabric, and it is. So I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine, and again, I'm just going to stitch right across that edge. So it looks something like that. Now you're gonna take your two pieces of two by two fabric, and you're gonna fold it in half. You wanna press it, and then you're gonna open it up, fold those centers in to that center line that you just made, just like that, and fold it in half again and press. And you're gonna repeat that for both of them. So fold it in half, make a line, open it up, fold those long edges into the center, and then fold it in half again and press. Once you have that done, you're just going to slip your zipper right inside, just like that. And then you're gonna take it to the sewing machine and you're just going to stitch right across that edge, close to the edge as you can. You can do one line of stitches or two, whatever you prefer. And you're going to put this one on the opposite end and do the same thing. So just clip those into place, pen, clip, glue, whatever you want, and then stitch as close to the edge as you can, one or two lines of stitching. Once you have that done, it should look something like that. We're just going to take our scissors and trim that even with the zipper. Okay, so now let's start assembling our pouch. This is really simple, guys. If you're new to sewing, this is an easy project to get started with. First thing we're going to do is take our outer fabric, the one that's going to be the front of our bag and we're going to fold it in half just to establish where that center point is. All right, so mine's right there. I don't know if you can see it, but this grid line is the middle. I'm gonna take my zipper, I'm gonna do the same thing. And I find with the zipper, it's easiest to just make a little tiny snip right there in the center, just a little. Not, you don't wanna go far in at all because you don't want it to show. But now I have just a little, the little tiniest of snip and it just shows me where the center is. So this is the front of my bag. This is my center line right here. I'm gonna take the zipper, I'm gonna turn it over so that the zipper pull is down and when it's zipped, it's on the left. Great. And now I'm gonna match that center point up with the center point of the bag or the front of the bag and I'm just gonna clip that into place. It's a pretty small project, so I don't need a ton of clips, and I find the more clips I use, the easier it is to get crooked. So I'm gonna actually undo my zipper now that I know which end it's up. I'm gonna put it on the other end, and I'm gonna line this side up. Clip into place, and this side. So I've got a little bit of extra fabric showing on either end of the zipper. It should be pretty even. I might scoot this down just a little bit. And my zipper's lined up with the top of the fabric. So now you're gonna take one of your lining pieces and you're going to put it face down. And you're gonna add that to the sandwich. I'm gonna use this end. And you're gonna make sure that your fabric's lined up on the ends. Right there. Right there. And I'm gonna sandwich that zipper in there. And clip that into place. So now you're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and you're gonna stitch that zipper into place. But you wanna start about where this tab is, just to the edge of it, right about there. And you want to stitch all the way down here to where this one ends, right about there. 
And you're going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down, back stitch at the beginning and the end. So when you're done, it'll look something like this. If you open it up, you can kind of see our bag taking place. You want to open it up and push the top layer down so that it's sort of folding over nice and straight. Then you can take it over your machine and you're going to top stitch right along that edge. Once you finish your top stitching, it should look something like this. So now we're ready to put the back side on. So we're going to take our little sandwich and we're going to flip it over. Again, line up our fabric. Line up the edge of the fabric, but line the top of the zipper up with the top of your fabric. I'm going to pin that into place. Take your other lining fabric. I'm going to line that right up on top. Just like that. Add it to our clip. Make sure our zipper is, everything is lined up here. And then this side I don't worry about clipping as much because as I'm sewing, I'm going to stop and move the zipper out of my way so that I don't accidentally sway. So this end I don't clip generally until I get down there and then I will line everything back up. So go ahead and do the same thing here. You're going to start where your zipper tab is, which is right here. And you're going to end where your zipper tab is on this end, which should be about there. So go ahead and stitch just like you did on the other side. Okay, so once you have that done, you're just going to open it up, pull your lining down, flip it over, and again, we're going to top stitch. I'm gonna close my zipper just to make everything lay nicely. Push that down into place, and we're going to top stitch right along this edge, just like we did on this side. So now we have something looking like this. What we're going to do now is pick up the two outer fabrics like this, pick it up and let the two lining fabrics fall together, just like that. And you're going to reach inside on the edge and you wanna match up the seams. Now what you're going to do is push the zipper teeth towards the lining. And that's going to naturally fold these edges the way they need to go. Just like that. Can you see that? So here is my sandwich. Just like this. I got my two lining fabrics and my two outer fabrics in my left hand. My two lining fabrics are in my right hand. I'm pushing that zipper towards the lining and letting these edges straighten up on the outer fabric. Just like that. And then you're going to clip that into place so that everything stays lined up right there. Now go to the other side and do the same thing. So I'm going to hold, this time I'm holding my two outer fabrics in my right hand and my two lining fabrics in my left. I'm going to push that zipper towards the lining. And that's going to line up my outer fabric so that it's straight. So push that zipper towards the lining and you see those edges, they roll out straight. That's what we want. Then clip that into place. Now you can work your way around. First thing you need to do is unzip that zipper. Very important, so unzip your zipper. And then go ahead and finish clipping all the way around. I worry more about my outer fabric being all lined up and then if I have any extra on my lining fabric, I can work that out. But let's make sure our outer fabrics are nice and straight. And now on our lining fabric, we're going to have to leave an opening to turn this right side out. So I'm just gonna mark a spot, uh, let's see, three inches, two and a half inches. And we're not going to pin or mark, or pin or sew it within those marks. So go ahead and keep pinning the rest. 
So now what you're going to do is start at one of these marks and you're going to backstitch and you're going to sew and you want to use a quarter inch or less seam allowance because we want to miss those zipper tabs. So we should have a half an inch on each side available. So if you sew with a quarter inch, you should miss it. But if you were a little bit um, heavy on your seam allowance, you might have to go a little bit less than a quarter inch to try to miss those zipper tabs. Now if you hit them, it's not the end of the world. It's just they look a little bit nicer if you actually miss them a little bit. So you're going to backstitch, sew all the way around until you get to that second line, backstitch and stop. Don't sew between these two lines. Okay, so it should look like this. We've got our opening in the bottom. We've got that zipper open and we've sewn all the way around. I've got a little bit of a trim here. And now what you want to do is go to your corners and just snip off those corners, making sure you don't cut through your stitches. And you can reach inside, turn it right side out. If you have a bone folder, stick that inside your opening and push those corners out. Make sure that they look nice and square. You can use a chopstick, whatever you have. Your zipper tabs, if you did them and you missed the tab, you should be able to see right through there. I could stick the bone folder in there. Let's see if this side worked out. And you can see I can stick it right in there. My zipper tab, I missed it. So we're going to push the lining in. Once you have that in, you can, again, see you can, I can go right through the zipper tab on both ends. And it makes a really nice finished zipper. Now all that's left to do is to pull that lining back out, straighten it up, make sure your corners are pushed out, and just kind of tug on it. These ends, the raw edges, will sort of naturally fall into place. If they don't, just help it out a little bit. You're going to fold those raw edges in. And then I like to just take it over to the sewing machine and stitch that closed. You could also use heat and bond, double-sided tape if you want, and tape it that way, or fabric glue if you don't want to see the seam. I don't mind it. It's the inside of the pouch, and I actually sew from one end to the other. I just think it looks more finished, but if you want, you can just stitch up that hole. And I've stitched mine up, so I can just stuff it back in there. Again, make sure all those corners are pushed into place. And you can see adding that interfacing on that lining even though this is a polyester, it gave it a little bit of durability and shape, which I really like. And there we have our cute little memorable zipper pouch. So here's our finished pouches. How fun are these? I think these are such great gift ideas and something fun to do with our photos. So often we take photos and we leave them in our phone and we don't do anything with them. And this is a way to remember those special photos. This one I think turned out really cute. Ace and Evie are going to go crazy. They love seeing their photos on just about anything. But what a fun remembrance. This is a trip that the kids and I and their mom, my daughter, uh, took to the zoo. So a little remembrance there. And then this is just a fun selfie that my daughter and her kids took. And inside's fully lined. We've got our nice little zipper tabs on the top, just like that. And I'll probably add a cute little zipper pull to the uh, top of this one. And then here is this one and you can see, I, well, maybe you can't, but I did add some quilt lines to it. That's the beauty of the fusible fleece. You get kind of that fluffy quilt look, but the, it really serves no purpose. It's just for aesthetic purposes. But if you look inside, here is their wedding photo and it's got um, forever or always and forever. If I can get that so you can see it. 
always and forever and it's got their wedding date on the inside so this is just a fun little pouch that she can either use for every day or maybe tuck some of her wedding mementos in there that she wants to keep her wedding jewelry or maybe um, her something blue or just some of her mementos in there or she could just use it as a coin purse whatever super fun but we did the sublimation on cotton and we did the sublimation on polyester and we used medium interfacing on this. We use fusible fleece on this. Makes a really nice weight bag that you can just toss in your purse or whatever you wanna do. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, if you're a Cricut user, I've already done a very one very similar to this and I will link that. Um, I'll try to link it right here and I'll also link it in the description below the video that shows you how to size and make this with Cricut um, with your Cricut and print and cut and printable fabric, which is another option. You could just print your photos with printable fabric and then go ahead and create the pouch. Now, if you use the printable fabric, I just want to make sure that you read the directions because if you want it to be permanent, there are extra steps you need to take other than just printing it. There are some extra steps that you need to take to be able to wash it. Otherwise your photo will wash right off. These are permanent. The sublimation's permanent. It's not going to wash away. So thanks so much for watching and until next time, never stop making. See you guys. Bye-bye.